Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and as you can see it's a very different scene than it was last week. Janet alluded to the fact that we are uh, we're going to attempt to demold the deck and uh, we're very happy to report it's been done. It certainly wasn't without its issues and, uh, and it was an incredibly stressful event but we, we did it and it's in here and life is very different for me inside the boat here. Now we've got a lot of work to do. I'm currently trying to work out how it's going to all Fit together. This week I'm going to be dealing with an issue up in the forward and the starboard head. Uh, last week you saw that the toilet wouldn't fit. Um, I've also come up with some other plumbing issues and I'm going to address that today with a massive reconstruction of the front crash bulkhead. And another thing I'm going to do is the mast post that's installed behind me here. I'm going to talk about the construction of that and how that's going to fit in the boat here. So lots more to come. The demolding of the deck yeah, you're going to have to wait a while and uh, there's a whole lot of photos up on Patreon for you guys. So thanks for supporting us guys on Patreon and uh, let's get into it, eh? Uh, so I'm going to have to lift this head out. This is going to get very, very complicated. I'm going to try to explain this, aren't we, John? <laughs> Toilets. <laughs> got to try to explain this here. This boat, the most complicated part of this boat is the toilet. We've got a dilemma down here because this head here this wall is against the crash bulkhead. Crash bulkhead doesn't allow for any pipe work to come through from the toilet. If I had thought about it, I would have made the crash. Oh, the other thing I could do is cut that crash bulkhead in, move the crash bulkhead That's smart. 10 centimeters forward. No, nah, it's not as smart as putting in pipe work. 100 mil. Oh, it makes no difference. You're still running the pipes down. Yeah, but I'd have a cavity, I wouldn't have wouldn't have tubes. So you don't have to put the 100 mil in then? I wouldn't have to put any tubes if I cut the cut, cut the bulk out. No, I can't do that. No, I'm gonna put the tubes in. I'll put the pipes in and just make sure oh, they're sealed. I see what you're saying. Move the whole wall 100 mil forward. If I move the wall 100 mil forward, it's gonna have to- Gives you 100 mil to run your- Maybe, yeah? Mmm. I cut that bulkhead out. It's gonna trim it down. harder to cut holes than it is to move the bulkhead. No, it won't. No? No. Okay, so we've got a lot of work to be done down in the forward um, starboard bow. We've got to move the crash bulkhead back a bit, 200 mil back, so that I've got room for pipe work. Um, pain in the ass, but it has to be done. It's just one of those things you can't factor on when you put the hole together, that you're going to need all of this extra plumbing. Uh, that's a lack of experience and also a a bit of a mission to get forward and I went by the plan but by moving the crash bulkhead back by 200 it's not going to affect the fact it's still going to have to have a crash bulkhead but I'll have a lot of room for all the pipe work that's going to have to happen. So Johnny and I are going to try and lift this head out. <laughs> I'm going to stand down there mate. What we're going to do, we're going to lift it up and then I'll sit it on that. Then we get it. We'll sit the base on, on the bulkhead. But uh, that's exposed. Um, yes. Exposed the, the, the said problem. It has. Have a look at that. So down in here, this bulkhead here. Oh, Christ! I'm down in the in the hole. So this is my crash bulkhead. What I'm going to have to do is come move this bulkhead back 200 mil. Now why I'm doing this is because I have about six hoses that need to come up the back of the head and three-way valves, anti-siphon loops and the works in this area here, I'm better off. What I was planning to do was have a pipe, a pipe and a pipe that enabled me to conduit all these hoses down. Easier just move the bulkhead back and I can just cable tie it to the wall. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that'd be much easier. Yeah, a fair bit of working out. Good job he was here. I don't do anything. <laughs> the doctor. Um, he's the plumbing doctor today, I'm not a, the doctor. I'm an all sorts doctor. I failed to notice when I was putting in the bulkheads because I didn't have that module in place that's up there. Um, that basically has no room behind the toilet. The only other thing I can do is move the toilet forward, make a box, 
and have all the plumbing inside the box behind the toilet, which is actually shortening the room in the head. That's not going to work. I want to have the toilet as far back against the wall. So I'll move this bulkhead back. I've got a lot of room here then to run. There's around about five plumbing lines that need to be happening in this area here. And without access to it, I'm going to struggle. There is an access panel here in the head that I can get to everything behind here. Three-way valves, the works, all in there. Um, there's going to be a bit of grinding and a bit of work to be done. The other thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to move this bulkhead back, which means that it's going to get smaller as it goes back, I can still reuse it. I'm going to use, I'm going to leave 25 mil or one inch of this bulkhead here to glue the head to on both sides. And I'll be able to access that through the hole in the head as well. Uh, once it's in place, I'll be able to cork the epoxy in, the Technic glue in to glue it in place. And uh, that'll be the job done. Down in there, and that means I'm gonna have to sand all this, um, grind all this bloody flow coat back and then re-flow coat it. But that, that's easier than trying to work out all these other pipe work. And to be honest, it wasn't gonna happen because I'm gonna have room here, John. No, three pipes won't fit Yeah, in there. I would have compromised the strength of the bulkhead by yes. putting tubes in there as well. Correct. It's nearly impossible to cut down in there because I can't get in there, so I'm just going to have to break this out. Hopefully the uh, the bottom where the tube is, where the pipe work is, is reasonably thin and the tabby's just going to have to give. I don't really know how else to get in there. My multi-tool is at its limit. It's 30 mil thick, so it's very hard to drill through it. I've got it pretty much done. Oh, this is a mess. And uh, I've almost got it. See, that's good because it saves the foam it's not into the hull but it's out so yeah now i've just got to move this back to there somewhere yeah i spared you the crap of me sanding that because it was like a snowstorm but um you can see where the old bulkhead is, I've still got my mask on so I'm sorry um, you see where the old bulkhead was and I've left an inch or so of it so that'll bond to the bathroom or to the head module and then over here is the new line for the new bulkhead which is okay, um, it should technically fit and I'm hoping that I can uh, make it fit perfectly but I'll have to go and get my, um, my jig and make a jig for it and bring it out and then recut the bulkhead but yeah that's going to work i think that'll be good oh what a job jesus been here for two hours grinding and sanding and yeah i'm going to tidy up down the bottom there once i re-tab it all and uh and then flake out the whole thing out again <laughs> i didn't breach the hole by the way which was really good i'm um, pretty positive about that uh, i will however be adding some subsequent um layers down in there in the bottom there where i've had to sand down to where the the hull is uh, just to make sure that I haven't created any issues down there to uh, that'll come back to bite me on the backside later on. Hello old friend, haven't seen you for a good couple of years. Well, I sort of need it to work that out. Now I could use a ticking stick or a toggle stick or whatever you want to call it, but this chain jig has been a winner for me. I've had dead accurate um, bulkhead templates from this right through this build and this is going to be no other because this is going to be a tiny bulkhead 
Um, it's actually shortened by around about two inches on each side as it tapers up into the bow there. But I'm better off to make this because then I'll get the most accurate thing. I can simply cut it, feed it back in, glue it in place, and, uh, and tab it in and get the job done. And once I've done that, I can start to really work on getting this forward head in. There's no going forward with the deck until the head's in there. I've saved you the cutting because that's as dusty as I'm just trying to get it done because I'm so pissed off that I've got to do this. But um, see how close I am with this. Very, very close. Very close. Just going to trim off that, this edge here. And I think she's going to fit really well. And that'll be a perfect fit. Back to where I was two years ago. <laughs> now, well, very important this time. Okay, so this guy's going to be tabbed in and uh, become the new bulkhead. I do have to add a piece to this to get it up level. And you see there, nice. Okay, now that is now done. I've spared you the laminating because it was uh, a little bit tight, close quarters in here and a little bit hard to film, but that now has three layers of 600 double bias on that side of that fillet. Uh, I had to add another 60 millimeters to the top of that, and then I'll be able to integrate that back in, down in there. It's all tabbed in, and, uh, and I'll be able to flow coat that out pretty quickly, get that finished, put on the lid, and then I can start to start to action the bulkhead that's here and start on the head installation up there so that has just improved this situation and i wish i thought of it back when i first started building the boat but i didn't but yeah that's looking pretty good now that is as good as the other one was in fact i was able to reuse the bulkhead uh, just by sliding it back and uh, you're pretty happy with that Righto, it's Friday <laughs> and I started this on Monday. Funnily enough, um, I have done about eight other jobs while I've been waiting for areas of this to set. This is about as neat as I could make it without spending another couple of days. I could have sanded all that uh, all that cloth and layers there. Bulk is never moving. Now I'm gonna glue this shelf down, which is the top of the crash bulkhead. It's going to get epoxied down with the Tetni glue, that R60 construction adhesive that I use. Now that's, that's one of the best epoxies you can buy. It's a meth methacryl product. It uh, will certainly bond this down. I'll, I'll weigh this down and I'll screw it down with a couple of set screws. And then I can come back and install the bulkhead that runs down here and over the top like I did on the port side. And I'll call that finished once I do that but for now I'm going to get that done and then I can move on to some other big jobs like my mast post.
Let's talk about mast compression posts. Um, I know a lot of the newer model catamarans actually have the saloon roof, will have the mast on top of the saloon roof, and then they can carry through a compression post into the saloon itself. And a lot of them make it a feature. A lot of it uh, is, is a, you know, a beautiful cosmetic finish inside by putting a beautiful stainless uh, uh, compression post or you know other ways it's hidden into other boats where it's actually hidden into the bulkhead. Um, the issue with this boat is that I have a very unusual area here. I've got this main centre bulkhead here and a triangle where the centre line is actually off centre to my main bulkhead. I have a larger um, main cabin for our main suite and the other side is slightly smaller around 20 centimeters shorter so this side on the port side is actually 20 centimeters shorter in length than the room on the starboard side as a result i need to put some sort of a mast post in here and i've determined the center line which is here on the bulkhead means that I need to uh, build some sort of a post. Now, my initial idea was to get a solid block of wood. Um, and in, in the initial plans for the plug that they made of this boat, uh, it had an Oregon post, and I'm not gonna use that. I've got marine ply, and I intend to laminate pieces of marine ply to get it to form a post. Now, I've just been up the factory there, starting to ferret through my materials, and I've actually worked out that a hollow post that's filleted and glassed to make a solid box section will be a better idea to obviously cut weight out of this. Now, the shape I need is this. So this is actually a template for my mast post. The only thing is my mast post needs to come right up to here. It needs to be engaged into this bulkhead, engaged into this bulkhead, and there is a gap between it and the main central bulkhead, and I'm gonna use that area two ferret wires down obviously with radar, wind meters, anemometers uh, and the like, you know, AIS or whatever needs to go down towards the electrics can go down this side or down this side but the post needs to be at least one meter long to give me the strength and the compression that I need and it's likely to be up around this high. So I'm going to have to go and cut some pieces of plywood to make to fit this particular profile. It'll be glued glassed, filleted all the way around as far as I can reach down into there and become one with this bulkhead which is already very stiff and solid and all sealed. I'm ensuring that every single surface is sealed with the epoxy before going forward. All right, so here it is. <laughs> My mask compression post. As you can see, substantial. It's 25 mil Australian hardwood marine ply. Probably weighs about 10 kilos, maybe a bit more, maybe 15 kilos. If that was solid, this thing would be a 40 kilo block of wood. I don't really think it's necessary. This is just a mock up, and I've screwed it all together, and I'll, I'll be sealing every single surface to ensure no rot. But also, by the main, main token, I'll be actually filleting and glass in each of the internals as well as the outside before gluing it into place.
this. I've actually sanded this out. This was actually saturated in epoxy so that it was soaked into the outer surface of the marine plywood. Now, remember, it's a 25 mil plywood. It's as heavy as buggery, and it's also the best I could buy in Australia. It is top end stuff. Um, I've saturated all of the end grains as well, but what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna actually laminate two layers of 600 double bias into this U-shaped channel here because I've got a really nice fillet all the way down the center here on both sides and that U-shape will be reinforced by the glass as well. So I don't think I could get any stronger without putting a stainless steel post in there and that would be, yeah, that would be very, very difficult given the constraints of the area in here that I have to fit this post. So that's layer one of 600 double bias. Now I'm gonna put two layers in here. I could probably get away with one layer, but I'm gonna do two because I'm just ensuring that this mask post it will never absorb water and will maintain its structural strength over the course of the life of the boat. So I was concerned about it actually holding in position and it's going to be peel plied as well. But more importantly, what I'll do is I'll simply tab the tape down. I don't really want too much bridging on the top. This is going to be sanded off tomorrow or cut off, ground off, and then another face plate of uh, 12 millimeter ply go over the top to form the box. So we'll get him down now. What I'll do is I'll run it along the top first. And the nice thing about uh, using peel ply with epoxy is you don't have to worry about the amine brush because it's actually on the surface and you rip off the peel ply and the amine comes off with it. So you're pretty much ready just to continue laminating or gluing or whatever you're going to do. Paint straight after a light sand and you're ready to go again. Okay, job done. That's all peel plied. I'm going to leave it. I'm hoping it stays there for the night. I had these horrible memories of me building my kayak when I put the cloth on it, it all just fell off. Epoxy is a lot um, more viscous, I guess you'd call it, from than vinyl ester. So it tends to sag if you don't get it particularly on a vertical face like this. But I've got the peel ply on. I've got two layers in there. I've really consolidated down well. If I come in in the morning, it's all in a heap. I might have to do it again. Right, next morning, this has gone off. Uh, this epoxy's worked beautifully, so I'm going to rip this peel ply off, sand down the top, and start to add this last section here, this laminated piece of 12 mil marine ply I have here to complete the box. Now I'm going to have to glue it on with the Technic glue onto the top, and but before I do that, I need to make sure it's going to fit because once I've glued it together, there's no going back. The only thing I could do then is sand back one of the faces, but that's uh, really, really strong. It's like a C channel now. And, uh, and ultimately it's going to become a box that is going to support our mast. Now I have to rip the top. Oh, ain't that fantastic. All right. Now, if I'd wanted to hang around last night, I could have come back and green trimmed this when it's set up about an hour and a half after, it, uh, after I laid it, but didn't have time to be somewhere, so I'm gonna to have to cut that off with the multi tool. That can't sustain a mask, not only can you, that is 